Hey everyone, and thanks for joining us in this week's Tech Demo. In recognition of International Games Week, we're going to be diving into some cool fun facts about the early days of video game history. So let's get started. The very first video game was shown at the 1940 World Fair, and was based off of an ancient mathematical game called Nim, which is speculated to have Chinese origins. The machine, designed by Edward Condon, was called Nimitron. In the time it was on display, it was played nearly 100,000 times. Nearly 20 years later, the game Tennis for Two was released in 1958. It was designed by a physicist as a way to entertain guests who would be attending an annual open house at the lab he worked for. He thought that an interactive game would be at once fun and show the capabilities of the technology they were working on. He took the tech from the radar displays that were used in his lab, and with the help of his partners, the game was developed in only a few weeks. Fast forward another nine years, and the very first commercial gaming system called the Brown Box was made in 1967 by Ralph Bayer. The system was later renamed the Magnavox Odyssey, and could be played by two people with a total of 28 games. Some of them even had accessories to make the gameplay more realistic, such as a light gun for Odyssey's shooting game. The game may have been ahead of its time because the sales were quite poor and the system ultimately failed. The first commercially successful gaming system was the Atari, which had a home and arcade version of the game Pong, an extremely popular title which has retained its notoriety today. The interest in Pong has actually been credited with helping to kickstart the gaming industry as we know it, according to the Encyclopedia Britannica. Atari, founded by Nolan Bushnell, the father of video games, came into conception in the early 1970s, bringing not only arcade games into popularity, but the home console as well. Atari dominated the video game industry in the 70s. Unfortunately, that success could not last forever. Due to the budding new industry for video games, where plenty of money was to be made, an influx of copycat consoles and poorly made games flooded the market. People wanting to make a quick profit put together troves of sloppily made titles. Because Atari didn't have very astringent boundaries for what could be played on its systems, the oversaturation of bad Atari games caused the public to lose interest. As a result of these shameless attempts to leech money from the public, in 1983 the video game industry crashed. One of the most notorious instances of these poorly made titles is the E.T. game for the Atari. In a desperate rush to piggyback off of the enormous success of the movie, the game was extremely rushed, giving the developers only 5 weeks to turn out a complete game. The final product was so poorly received that it is still considered one of the worst, if not the worst, video game of all time by the general gaming community. The 1983 crash left stores with far more titles than they knew what to do with, and in an attempt to clear space for new and significantly more popular products, the titles were sent back to the dumbfounded manufacturer. Atari themselves did not know what to do with the unmovable product, and in the end the solution was to literally bury these titles in the desert. And that sounds like a metaphor, but I iterate once more, they buried these games in the desert in a landfill. Thousands of unwanted Atari games, 700,000 to be exact, as Atari later confirmed, were buried in New Mexico, and in 2014, an excavation was set in place to recover some of these lost titles. Only a little over 1,000 were actually recovered. There's a documentary on this fascinating piece of gaming history called Atari Game Over, for anyone interested in the whole story. But did the gaming industry really die? Well, of course, we already know that it didn't. In fact, the PS5 and the Xbox Series X have just had their first worldwide releases, bringing in the newest generation of gaming consoles. So, who was it that revived video games? Well, that would be Japan. If we have the United States to thank for the birth of the video game, it's Japan who is responsible for its resurrection. Japan, with its release of Nintendo and Sega in the early 80s, was able to resurrect the gaming industry. Nintendo was much more selective about the titles it would allow on the Nintendo Entertainment System, commonly known as the NES, than Atari was, making sure that what it was releasing was quality content. They even went as far as to add a mechanism in their consoles and games that would make them only compatible with each other, so that the NES would play those games and those games only. Nintendo came to the US and was extremely well received, largely due to the popularity of Super Mario Bros. Mario became an instant icon and as recognizable by children as Mickey Mouse or Bugs Bunny, according to Nintendo themselves. Mario is still one of the most iconic characters in gaming history and is a household name. Generations are familiar with the mustached plumber, who regularly returns in new Nintendo titles. 
For our last fun fact of the day, and still on the subject of Nintendo, we have one of the first handheld gaming systems, the Game Boy. This popular successor to the Game & Watch system released in 1989. This system was the first handheld gaming device to use interchangeable game cartridges. It soared in popularity with games like Tetris, Super Mario Land, and Kirby's Dream Land. A pretty interesting piece of history for the Game Boy is that one of these handheld devices actually survived a bombing. The plastic casing of the system was burnt and melted to a crisp, but the hardware inside remained intact and able to run its games just fine. This Game Boy is still on display at the Nintendo Store in New York's Rockefeller Center. Thanks for watching today, everybody, and if you've got any cool, weird, or fun video game facts of your own, please mention them in the comments. Or if you'd like to see a part 2 where we cover some fun gaming facts from the 90s and beyond, let us know. Have a great Saturday!